Hi guys, it's Moz here and today we're going to be doing a bit of a series on building this Tiger One starter set from Airfix. These were for sale in the local Audi or Lidl, so whichever one you bought it from, this will be what you get inside the box. So this will be the unboxing video today and later on we'll do a building video and then a painting video afterwards so the unboxing of this kit so we're going to see what you get inside the box that's basically what i do with these unboxings at first you can see you've got a really good box art there of the tank you're going to be building german symbols on there because it is a world war ii tank inside the box you will get three acrylic paints one brush and one tube of poly cement on the back of the box you have what we call a call out which basically tells you the size of the of the kit, the colour it's going to be, and it also tells you where the decals or the water transfers will be placed on the model. The side of the box always has some information, the history of the tank, including the length, the width, and this particular kit here has 39 pieces. It's classed as a skill level one, so it shouldn't take too much to build, and these flying hours is a little marketing technique from Airfix where you can become a member of their club. I will leave details for this club in the description and you can collect these flying hours and you can then use these flying hours to get other kits for free, not including the postage and packaging, obviously. So straight off, let's have a look at what you get inside the box. So this is what you get inside the box. You will get a bag full of parts, which we call sprues. And on the sprues are the parts that you need to build the kit. You will get a bag of paints in little tubs or little pots, and you will get a tub of poly cement. Now we call this glue, but it's not really a glue. What happens is this liquid inside the tube basically when you put it on the plastic what it does it creates an endothermic reaction which means it heats up the plastic and then melts it and welds it together and then when it's dry it creates a bond so that's how this poly cement works remember use it liberally when you're building a model you also get inside the pack uh, a Humbro number no. two paintbrush, and this is for painting and not to be used with the cement. Take away this protective film here, you have what we call the decals or decals, depending on who you speak to. And they are basically water transfers. What you're gonna be doing is once you've painted the model, you, you cut the decals on the card, then you soak this in water. And what happens is the transfer will come loose off the backing card and you then slide them into position on the model. Very easy to use and I'll show you how to use these in the build video. You also get inside the kit this instruction manual and basically it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to build your Tiger One. And you'll see that it is full of instructions on how to build the model. And as we progress, we will show you how to use the instructions. What's missing, sadly, in these start sets from Audi and Lidl, Airfix have created a before you start guide. This one here. And basically, it's a sheet with some very good tips on how to build a model. And what I have done is I've scanned this sheet and I've put it as a link in the description. So you can then click that link and you will see a PDF file and you can print that PDF file of this sheet and it will help you as you start building this Tiger One tank. The link is in the description box below. Let's open the bag here of sprues and let's just see what we get. And there you are, you have three sprues. Each are lettered and numbered so you will know where to find the part. This one here is frame A. And as you can see, there's little tabs with numbers on. So you'll be able to find the part that you need. This is basically the belly of the tank, the skirts, the top, and you can see there's some intricate detail or some tools on here. So that will be frame A. 
To be fair, it's pretty sharp. It's a, it's a new tool in, it's only two years old. So you shouldn't have any problems with this kit. This one is frame B. There you go, frame B. And they're also numbered as well. You can see the little numbers there, 15, 16, 17, 18. And uh, this is mostly the turret. As you can see, some lovely fine detail there. And finally, we have frame C, which is the gearing. So no need to go worrying about uh, if you've built kits before and you've had to uh, cement the tracks and the wheels in or the, or the or the running gear there's no need this comes as uh, basically one piece and all you do is you can actually paint this before you attach it to the model it makes it easier so you can paint the gray of the tracking and then also the gear and you can paint the color that says what is said in the instructions basically you snip these off with the screw cutters and then glue them together and then you glue that piece onto the model so there you go that was a little unboxing of the airfix starter set the 172 scale tiger one hi guys it's moz here and we're going into part two of this tiger one starter set series Today we're going to talk about the tools, preparing the model and building it. So guys, if you've not downloaded this before you start guide, I recommend you do that. There is a link in the description box below and we can go through everything that you need to get building this model. First off, we're going to look at the tools you're going to need to build this kit. You will need a nail file or some sanding paper. You can also use a metal file, some tweezers. You can even use tweezers from a makeup set, like these little ones. Scissors. You need scissors to cut the decal sheet and also you can use these to cut the plastic. Some side cutters or clippers. You can get these from any DIY shop. Masking tape. Now this is used by decorators to uh, trim up some edges, but anything papery with some stickiness to it can be used. And some clothes pegs. You may need this for keeping pieces together while the glue or the cement sets. Once you've got these items, keep them close by because you're gonna need them for building this model. As a bonus item, if you have one, you can use a sharp knife which will help clean up the parts. During the manufacturing process, sometimes some release agent is used on the tooling to help with the removal of the molded parts. And you have to get rid of this. So what we do is we get a container, put in some detergent or washing up liquid, and we give the parts a wash. Then place the parts on a tea towel, dab off the excess, then allow it to dry. Let's have a quick look at the instructions that come with the Tiger One starter set. On the first page, we call these diagrams sprue trees. So basically you are seeing the pictures of the sprues and just letting you know what parts are on which sprue and their number so on the top of this page you have some symbols on how and this will help you with building the kit so if you see a white circle with letter and a number in the letter is the frame and the number is the part if it's a black circle with x2 in it that means you repeat the process a triangle with the blue cement there means you've glued the part if it's got a line through that symbol it means do not glue a black round symbol with a question mark means optional parts and you get a square box with some numbers and the color paintbrush that is the paint color so for instance on the back page so if you see 53 here with the paintbrush that means that you use the paint in this pot here which has the number 53 on it each step will show you how the parts go together it will also show you the sprue tree and which parts you need to cut off the sprue tree and then underneath that is how it should look when this is all cemented together the blue line is where you put the cement 
on this kit. Inside the bag is the three paints that you need and the cement. Cut this open with some scissors. We should put these paints to one side because what we need to use is this poly cement. And we will show you how to use this using a cocktail stick. So grab your box and then cut a piece from it using the scissors. We will use that to put the cement on whilst we build the kit. With the part in front of us, we can then use the sprue tree mat to see which parts we need. So these are black, so we need to cut those pieces off the sprue. They are numbered A2, A1, and A3. So we need frame A there, and we need number one, which is that one there because there's a number one right next to it. We need number two, which is that one there, and number three. To cut the sprues off, using a pair of side cutters, we cut just so there is a little bit left on the part. And then that comes off the sprue. We get your nail file now, and we just carefully sand off the little nub that's left until it's flat. Run your finger down just to make sure that it's flush. You can also use a file for this. Or if you don't have them, a bit of sandpaper just to rub up the ends. Now the part has been cleaned up, you can now do this with every part that you cut off the sprue. Here you can see there's these little tabs on these parts. Just trim these off. These are uh, injection pin nodes. These are used just to give this part a bit more of an extra push. Just trim these off. Now these parts have been cut and sanded, ready, we can now do what we call dry fit, where we dry fit something to make sure it all looks proper and fits properly. So you can see that the part there, you can see that the, the parts fit really nice. So now we can add some cement. Get your little piece of cardboard and then put some of the cement on that piece of card. And then we need to apply glue to this piece down here. So, little cocktail stick, load up the cocktail stick with some cement, and then carefully place it on the edge. Bring the part up and then gently fit it into position like so. Make sure it's in the recesses and then just hold it for a few seconds just to let the cement start to uh, do its magic. And then you can do the other side. If you see any excess, get your cocktail stick and just gently just wipe it up. And there you go and then you can leave that to dry. And then we can move on to the next section. This is stage two. So we now need this part here, number five on frame A, 
and number four also on frame A. So you see that number four, so we can see that number four and that one there is number five. So now these two pieces have been sanded and all the nubs removed and these are now ready to be applied using the same technique as before with the cement. Look at the instructions, see where the glue needs to go and then place it dry fit first and then see and then put the glue where the where the blue where the blue marks are here. I would also put a little bit of glue here, just on the edge. Now here, place a little bit of masking tape on the model, just to help it stay in position. And there you go. The front section, again, make sure the fit is good, like so. And then we put some glue just there on the edge. And there you go. The first two steps, all done. Now we move on to step three which is this piece here, number six, just there. That's the piece we need, frame A, number six. So, all sanded up, ready to go. Again, we dry fit. And we can see that it's all in position there. We can now cement this in. Now the blue marks are showing glue on the underside of there and a glue on that little shelf on the back. So glue in those two positions there. And again, you put the front in first and then just lower it down on the back. And there you are. That's basically the first three steps of this build done. So now we're on to step four and it's more of the same really. You go to the sprue and you cut out those pieces there, which is A7 and A8. Cut them up with the sprue and then give them a clean. So there we go, A7 and A8. Just on the side, you can see that the cement is actually gone dry, it's dried up here. So I'm able to take it off the card and put fresh cement down. You don't need a lot of cement. Cocktail stick in hand, we then pick up the part and then we do exactly the same again. We dry fit to make sure that it all looks good. And then we glue where it tells you on the instructions. So it looks like there's a ridge there. So on this top ridge here, we're gonna place some cement. and then we fit it to the side. There's the first side done, and basically it's a case of rinse and repeat. And there you go, that's basically the body of the model made. I'm quite pleased with that. I hope you're pleased, if you're following along, I hope you're pleased too. Now it's time to get onto the fiddly stuff. And I recommend this time you get yourself your tweezers out, whether you've got like a, a pair like this, or you've gone to uh, your girlfriend's uh, makeup drawer and grab these uh, beauty uh, for eyebrows. <laughs> uh, this time we're onto frame B. You can see frame B there, and we need number 12, number 12, and number 18 on the picture there. So from this sort of angle, 
you're going to be needing number 12, number 12, and number 18. Now, as you can see, we've got some more of these injection pin, injection pin lugs here that needs to be removed when you take this part off the, off the uh, sprue. The part 18, where you want to cut, is right there. You see that? That little notch there. You want to cut that there because if you go too far, then it's just going to, it's going to be a flat piece there. It has to be very flat. You see the hose at the back. You've got one, two, three, four, and five. Pick up the part and make sure it fits nicely. And there you go, and it is. So now it's dry fitted in. We can a little bit of cement just inside. We'll check it again which way it goes so that goes up get your tweezers and then push them in there you go there's the first piece in on the back on the little let's say you put one on the pin there one on the pin and then again tweezers two in them to there so this will go in to there perfect you could even just dab that down into the glue and put them also into the two holes which are there and there there you go perfect we are going to bypass this part here number six because really we want to keep these parts off this model so that we can paint them so we're going to add these after we've done a paint job so number six we don't do at the moment we're going to go on to number seven just to put these two parts on and then we're going to build the turret so we're going to need number 17 and number 19 that part there number 17 and then also this part here number 19 so we're going to put number 19 dry fit to see if it fits in there which is lovely and then we will whoops just notice a little bit more sanding required be very careful with these parts because if you drop them into your carpet you will struggle to find them again so that's in position into the cement we'll place this make sure it's the right way round, and then we will Same with this piece, make sure it's the, the right way around, put it into the cement, find the position, carefully put it into position, like so. Okay, step number eight is the turret, and we're going to be needing number five, number four, number one, and number two. So on this here, we can see we've got B1, B2, B4 and B5. Those are the bits we need. So these little pieces now have been uh, sanded up, cleaned up, ready. And we need to be very careful here because you do not put glue on these parts here. You be very careful how you glue these together because this should be able to swing once it's in position. So looking at the instructions, we dry fit again using the location pins. These are called locating pins here, which is cool. That goes onto there, and then this should fit in there. This is going to be a bit uh, fiddly. And there you go. That's what it looks like dry fitted. So now we need to put all this together. But now this is all in position. That should be moving. And the gap isn't so bad now. 
And you notice that the locating pin holes here and the locating pins are fat and thin. So you need to make sure you put them on the right way round to fit that in there. And there you go. That's the top half of the turret made. Just make sure you're pointing forwards just a little bit so you don't get it the glue. So the glue that's gone just in that edge there will make it stick shut, if you know what I mean. So you won't be able to make it move. So just push it forward a little bit and that should protect it from gluing together. Now we're on to step nine and we're going to be needing part three and part six. So B3 will go on the top and uh, B6 will go on the side, about there to cover that join, I hope. So looking where the glue goes, it's mostly on the shed here, on the inside shelf. So we'll glue inside there. And it's saying there's a little bit to go there for that piece there. So then this should go on top. Overlaps, and it goes, perfect. And then we need to put some glue, I presume on top, to go there, perfect. And what I am gonna do is put a little bit of glue on this edge here. And there you go, that's the turret all glued together now. So now we're just gonna add some more pieces to this. We're gonna need B10 and also B11. And I'm gonna put these parts in, but I'm gonna leave B8 off because we're gonna have to um, paint that. And then there's the turret as well that we need to put together. That looks about right, doesn't it? First piece in. And finally, that little piece there is in position and that still moves. Now we need a piece here. We also need the uh, piece there for the end of the barrel. And there's the end done. Well, there is the turret all complete. So you've got your, your body there, and you've also got your turret. Now you need a step number 11 now, after you've done the turret, which is number 10. This this one here, number 11, where you pick up her frame seat, which is the tracks and the gearing. But um, I suggest we just cut them off and clean them because we're gonna paint them and then we're gonna glue them together uh, then we're going to glue them to the body. And that's as far as we're going to go to in this video. We have basically built the model almost ready for completion. All we have to do now is paint the little pieces that are left, do the tracks, paint the turret, paint the body, paint in the little tools that are on side, add a little bit of colour. And then after a final assembly, we can then put the decals on but that's all coming in the next video hi all it's moz and we are doing part three of this tiger one build from fx so if you watched the previous video we actually built this tank from this kit here which is the tiger one from fx and now it's time to start doing some painting so now we need to go back into the box and retrieve some of the items that were in the starter set. You're going to need the three paints that came with the kit. 
you will also need this number two humble paintbrush. A couple of other items I suggest you get hold of. One is these stirring sticks or some sort of stick to stir the paint with. I get these from McDonald's. These are coffee stirrers and they make really good stirring sticks. Some blue tack. I'll show you what I use blue tack for as we get into painting the model. You will also need some tap water. Not to drink, you're gonna use this with the paint. And a bonus product if you have one is a flat brush. I use a humble flat brush, but you can find these in any art store. You don't necessarily need to use a flat brush, but I find it easier to use this to put on the final coats. And don't forget your before you start guide, because we'll be using this to explain some of the processes and techniques I use when painting this tank. So now let's start with painting the tank. On the back of the starter kit box, it tells you the colors that you need for this tank. And at the moment, the main paint we're gonna be using is number 94, because we are going to paint the body and the turret. You will get this little pot of paint, and if you open up the lid carefully, you will see that it's very watery. That's because the pigment has gone to the bottom and the, and the water basically is on the top. So you need to give this a really good stir. Get your stirring stick and give it a good stir. The secret to this paint is to make sure it is really well stirred but also add a few drops of water to this to thin it down just a little bit more. And then stir it a little bit more. With all modeling, preparation is key. Now we have stirred our paint, I get some blue tack and then I place the blue tack underneath the tank and I get another stirring stick and I press that onto the tank. And that way you can hold the tank and position it to make it easier to paint. Just something I picked up over the years with these little tanks and uh, it does make it easier. I also use this technique when I'm painting a plane. Your paintbrush will be a little bit stiff. So what I suggest is dip it in some water, get some paper towel and just wipe the brush and that way it flexes up the, bris the bristles ready to use. So now it's time to load up the paint onto the brush and then we start painting. Now, as you can see, it's gone on a little bit rough and that's okay because you're gonna be building up with layers. That's the point of this paint. It's not a one coat does it all, you need to build it up. So imagine this is being more like the prime coat, which basically then bonds paint between the plastic and itself. So you put it on a little bit rough, it's a little bit thin, but it doesn't matter because the more you build up the paint, the better it will look. And at this point here, we're going to leave this to dry. And then we're going to move on to the turret. Again, we've got a stirring stick. And we're going to use that to give us help, to, that will help us paint this turret.
and there you go. You can leave that also to dry. In the last video, I forgot, we need to uh, glue these in. So again, we get some of the poly cement and we will then glue these together. Then once they're glued, we will then paint this up. So I've left this to dry for 10 minutes and now it's time to put on a second coat. While those are drying on their second layer, we should now start to paint, paint these little pieces too. So now we are cooking on gas. As you can see, the paint is starting to level off and it's looking pretty good. You see that? Because you're building up layers of paint. Fabulous. I'm really happy with how that's going. So this is our two coats. As you can see, there are some brush marks there, but they will level out. The more, the more layers you get on, the better. So it's time to put on a third layer. It's always good practice to keep the paint stirred because the pigment does seem to get to the bottom. So just every so often, just give it a stir. Don't need to worry about it too much, but give it a stir in between the coats. So here we go, this is it. This should be now time for the final coat. I'm going to switch over now to my Humbro flat brush. I just prefer to finish off using a flat brush. Obviously you can still carry on and use your Humbro uh, number two. As I said, I just, uh, you know, it's just a nice finish using this brush here. So one more coat all over and um, hopefully then we'll start with uh, painting up these uh, tracks. So paint has been stirred, so now it's time to go in and give this final coat. Just one thing I mentioned, I tried to go in one direction with the final coat. So I'm going left to right with this one, just to give it that final look.
So now it's time to paint the tracks. Now, I'm gonna use a bit of blue, blue tack again to keep them upright while I paint. And we're gonna do them, we're gonna do uh, two coats with the, uh, with the paint. And uh, so we're gonna do one half and then the other half. That's basically how we do it. So we're gonna need the paint here, which is number 53, which is what the uh, um, instructions tell us, number 53 to go there. And it's time to lay down some paint. So, stir and stick in hand, we're gonna give the paint a really good mix again. And this is actually quite thin, considering. So, we're gonna give this a really good stir. I'm gonna add a few drops. And stir that in as well. And that will give us a nice thin mixture to be able to apply this paint to two or three coats as well on the tracks. So the paintbrush has been cleaned, dab it into the paint, and then we start painting. And again, you're treating this paint like a primer, like a first coat. These have been washed, but you can see the surface tension with, you know, with the, with the, the, the plastic, which is okay. Just do some nice flash strokes and you'll get the coverage you need. Remember this is just the base coat, so the other paints will tend to stick on top of this one. Try and go as far around as we can, and then onto the next track. And then we leave that to dry. And now it's time for the second coat. There you go, that's the second coat. And now we do one final coat on this side. And now it's time to do the other side. And now it's time to put the tracks on. So you need to have a good look and just see where the pins are and just gently push them in and then give them a, a firm push just to make sure that that's the dry fit so now we know they fit perfectly we can then remove them and then we can glue up these pins i suggest just gluing up these pins that's all you need to do with some of the cement Just firmly press the, the tracks into the body and there it is, all cemented together. And then we do the same for the other side. And there you go. That's the model put together. Now you notice there's some silver that's ended up on the gearing. It's quite simple. Get the paint and then just paint up over the silver and it should become uniform. Brilliant. On the instructions, you can see there's some places that need some extra color. So that there, 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 and there. I think that's basically it. Need um, some silver, and that also needs some silver as well. And also that gun there needs some silver too. Always remember to stir the paint, because even after a few hours, it does uh, tend to separate. So we'll take off the turret, and then we're just gonna gently paint these in so all I do is I get a very tiny amount at the end of my brush and I just gently carefully press the paint onto the, the tools here you see that seems to be amazing but just gently paint them in
Now, if you remember in the instructions, we had some small parts to put on here. Looking at the instructions, you can see there's that part there to go on. If we dry fit to make sure it looks okay, then we need the tiniest amount of cement. Tiny amount. Push that down into position. And there we go, that piece is now fitted on the turret. Again, on the back, we've got some pieces to fit, so we cut them off the sprue. And uh, again, we find the edge, just, just dry fit that there to make sure it's all okay. Just a tiny bit of uh, sanded needed there. I think that should uh, fit in there nicely. We drop this piece into the cement. Put some cement on there and then we place that into the hose and just press it just press it enough it goes flat there you go that's the first bit done again make sure that it all fits nice so you can see there's a little bit of a an edge there so just sand that bit off if you want it to be as flush as possible to this fit perfect into the cement and then onto the back. And there's a pair of wings there on the back. Finally, these two pieces here that was left go into these holes here. You like to make sure there's uh, no paint in these holes. Because sometimes paint does get in these holes. And again, double check the instructions to make sure they go the right way around. And you can see that they're basically, you've got the three bolts at the bottom there. So you want the bolts at the bottom. It's easy to go in like so. So you can see those three bolts. So there's the first ones in. Glue to this, some cocktail stick. And just dab in the hose. And then that then can get placed on top. Perfect. There's the first one, add some more cement. A little bit in each hole again. And there you go, that's the build completely done. Now we need to move on to the decals. So guys, we now go on to the section where we put the transfers or the decals or decals onto the model. You are going to need a few tools to do this job properly. You're going to need a sharp pair of scissors. You're going to need some tweezers. You're going to need some cotton buds to soak up the water. You will also need your brush. Okay, so use this brush. Make sure it's nice and clean from any paint. So uh, you need your brush as well and you're going to need some i use cold water but people say warm water is better i think if it's a bit warm it comes off the backing paper or the backing card a bit quicker but i always use cold and i don't find it a problem now just like the sprues this decal sheet has numbers so you've got one two three and four and uh, you look at the instructions and uh, you will see where they go. So we're looking for number one at the minute. So there is number one, and basically it's got like a, a cutout. Basically you're gonna put it there. There you go, you see number one goes there. So you're looking for number one on the sheet, which is that one. And you can see that you can just see in the light, there's a little bit of film on top. That's the actual transfer there. So you're looking for the 334 and the uh, German symbol there. And there you go, there's the symbol there. And then what they've done is they've just done a little cut out just to show you exactly where it goes. It goes on top of that, all right? And then you've got number two, which is that side there. Number three is, where's number three two? Ah, so there's number three there, and you also have a number three there. So on the sheet, you can see there's number one, number two, and then you've got three and three, so you've got two the same. And then on the very back of the turret there, you've got that one there which is number four. It's pretty straightforward, and uh, you'll see how we uh, put them on the model. Let's get on to cutting out the decals. 
So we're going to go for number one and we're going to use these sharp scissors here and cut around the decal. So there you go, that's decal number one. We're going to get our tweezers, hold the paper and we're going to put it in the water and just let it sit there for a bit. And just let it soak up some of the water. And what I do is I just drop the water off, let it drip a little bit and then place it on my workbench and just leave it to soak in. Now you can use your brush, a little bit of water on the brush and then just press on the transfer just to see if it starts to move you know that it's roughly ready to come off the backing paper. Now you can see, if I bring the camera in closer, now you can see if I just push the brush down, you can see the transfer is peeling off the card. And so you can see it moving. There you go, it's moving now. Now here's a technique for putting that decal on the tank. So put it on its side, we'll put the model on its side and then what we do, we'll put a bit of water down first. So we cover the section we're gonna put the transfer on with water. That helps, that helps it slide. And then carefully with the uh, brush, hold the transfer and just gently put it off the tank. It doesn't matter that it's not straight because you can adjust you can adjust the position using the brush. So also you can use a cocktail stick, but be very careful when you do this to manipulate the transfer into position. Be very careful with the cocktail stick that you don't rip it. Just a little bit more water and we need to place it so it's just underneath there. I'm gonna place it there, I like it there actually. I know the instructions say that it should go over it slightly, but I'm just, I'm gonna do it there. So I think that looks pretty good. So there you go, that's in position. And then you get yourself your little cotton bud and then just wipe away by rolling over the transfer just to soak up any excess water and then just basically firmly not too firmly but just enough just to roll it like a rolling pin action just to keep the transfer on the model and i think that's pretty good to be honest i'm quite happy with that then you do the same for the other side And then we do exactly the same again with the rest of the transfers. Now, if you feel confident, you can actually pick up the transfers with the actual paintbrush and place them into position and roll them off the brush. That's if you feel confident doing that. If not, just, just push it off with using the backing paper. And then the final one here goes on the back of the turret. That one there. To make it a bit easier, I'm going to turn the turret on its side because it'd be easier to place it on there.
as you can see, they can be very fragile, so you've got to be very careful. This one's actually just come apart, come away. It's not a problem. We can put them in position, and then you can just wipe that in. So even though it kind of came away, I was able to keep it in position. That's the good thing about these transfers. The film in between can be a little bit fragile, but you'll get there in the end, I promise you. So yeah, a bit of a mistake there, but uh, there it is. It looks pretty good. One other place you could put a transfer is you can actually um, use this as a transfer as well, which is what we're going to do. We're going to place that section there. We're going to cut this out. We're going to put that underneath the model. I'll show you in a minute. We're going to place that there so you know what you've built. You can turn your model upside down. A little bit of water. So if you forget which tank you've done, or you can't recognize it, you'll know by turning upside down, you can see that you've built the Tiger One. And there you go. So there you are, that's the build of the Airfix 1-72 scale Tiger 1, the beginner's starter set. I hope you've gained so much valuable information from this series. We've gone through what the parts are called, the sprues, we've showed you how to use the instructions, we've showed you how to uh, cut off the parts, make sure that they fit by using a brilliant technique which I see very few people do these days is dry fit. You know, if you don't dry fit, you can't guarantee that it's going to even look good. So always dry fit when you're building your kit. And then once you know it's looking good, then you can cement. That is just, just that is the real secret of building a, a model kit is the fact that you dry fit. And if you see there's any errors, you can sort it out, then you glue it. Um, we've gone through the painting. We've gone even through the stages of the decals and you're left with a beautiful model. I really hope you've enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, click like. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, ring that bell, select all, and you'll never miss another video from us again. Any questions, any comments, and your thoughts on this kit, leave them in the box below because I do reply. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.